Welcome to Diablo 2 Resurrected. Every dawn seems to bring more adventurers into our midst, but none who can yet be called heroes. I bide my time and continue scouring the old texts for answers. If only I had taken them more seriously, not dismissed them so lightly. Finally, one of these adventurers seems to stand out from the rest. Though a man of few words, he radiates a calm and focus that unnerve the others, who are only interested in pillaging and looting. I feel I have come to know this hero, this wanderer. I have revealed my history and shared my knowledge with him. Thanks, Deckard. We return. Our mission today is to make our final push towards the Rogue Monastery and into the catacombs beneath to find out exactly what has happened. I mean, we've got a pretty good idea. Demon worshipping scum. The necromancers in the Diablo universe aren't evil or inherently evil in any way. They're actually priests. A necromancer is like a derogatory term for them. They are the priests of Rathma. And their job is to protect the balance. The balance between chaos and order. Which is the only thing that stops poor humanity and Earth being destroyed by the war that rages in the heavens. But we will see more about this war and its effects on humanity uh, in later chapters of this epic saga. Whether or not our protagonist, Axis the Necromancer, can make it that far is still yet to be seen. Although the Bony Boys are quite the menacing force at the moment to just these low level creatures. Although we don't want to get too messed up with mindless murder. We want to focus our rage and our vengeance on those that took from the rogues pillaged their monastery. I don't mind a bit of chaos every now and then. But burning the monastery to the ground, that's a bit too much. Although I can see why they did it. I mean, the, these boys out here in the fields have got formed for burning everything they see. Gem. Oh. Ain't no thing like a magic ring. Good easy thousand gold. Every time you find one. Observant viewers may have noticed that every now and then when I go near a enemy, there's a golden halo that appears. That's to signify that the attacker is taking damage from me. A few of the items that I'm carrying now in my kit reflect damage back to the attacker. It's negligible, but you, there are there are builds that you can focus on where reflects the majority of the attacks back. I'm pretty sure there is a necromancer skill, like a curse, that allows you to curse your enemies and every time they hit something they take twice or three times their own damage back. Very good when they're hitting mindless skeletons. Although 
Though I can't remember if enemies can be under the effect of multiple curses at once. head in this general direction we should make it to the entrance to the monastery this game can really be a sensory overload sometimes we've been playing it for hours on end it's like a an ironic sense of insanity that overwhelms you from all the murdering and screams and cries of pain. <laughs> I remember having vivid dreams as a child. Not nightmares, but just damn vivid, vivid ones. Found the entrance just in time for some experience. Although the temptation is real just to keep killing everything in the fields now that there's a shrine there. As you can see, that temptation is taking over. <laughs> and I'm leaving the area <laughs> of the monastery. And we made it to the new level, so I'm satisfied with that. And I can just casually choose a new skill while my team does the heavy lifting. We'll put on Skeleton Mastery, which will give all of my skellies a minor buff to their damage and life. If you put enough, if you put enough skill points into Skeleton Mastery, your skeleton models change, and they become heavily armored and better armored. A level 20 <laughs> skeleton is a quite imposing looking guy. He looks like a tomb guard. If anyone's familiar with tomb guards from Warhammer. Another franchise with stories abound. I'm sure I will cover one day. This place has the stench of demons about it. Yeah, I prefer the stench of death personally. But we can turn demon stench into death stench very easily. Just with this one simple trick. I promise you I'm making my way back to the monastery. And we have arrived. The scene of our ultimate battle for this act. Nice little jewel there. Nice double doors. We're here, everyone. I remember the first time I played the Outer Cloister, this music dropped. I was like, holy moly. Poop factor, because, you know, we didn't know what the boss was going to look like, if you haven't seen it. Okay. And because you spent the whole act fighting what you think to were bosses with all the fancy named creatures and the occasional Greetings. super tough zombie like Griswold, and you walk into that chamber and you're like, ah, him again. <laughs> My tip, bring poison resist or antidote, because that thing likes to poison you. 
Although I'm confident that she won't even get a lick on me. Amateurish and Ariel. Not a bad little collection of Gemini gems for our first act. We'll be furiously crafting in the next. Thinking of something interesting for Blaze to make sure she doesn't perish in the battle to come, but. I'm feeling like being generous and giving her something decent, but. I feel like role playing, and I don't want to resurrect my heroes or my mercenaries if they. if they die. So I'll be losing gold on any investment armor. I'll treat them like the Romans. I'll give them good enough kit, but I don't want to pay too much. And I'm pretty sure you have to resurrect your hero to recover their gear, so... Good luck, Blaze. Do your best. So we've come back to the front gate. I took the long way, as per usual. Now we've got another quest to do on the way to the final boss. But I'm pretty sure that if we travel downstairs, we'll be able to do both on the way. Both the boss fight and the hammer quest that we were given in the last episode. Leave no stone unturned. I mean, it doesn't really matter what level you are, as long as you can kill the boss. But I like to be over leveled, especially in hardcore. So, so the barracks is the next step before we get to the catacombs. Or the inner cloister, I should say. We have to go through the jail to get to the inner sanctum of the monastery. And from there, the catacombs below. I am running purely on muscle memory here. Like I said, it has been at least, at least 15 years since I've played Diablo. Ah, the slow torture of caged starvation. As opposed to the fast torture of these little guys <laughs> swarming your house. Well, I have a few choice words for you, lads. The curses be upon you. It's funny that a statue can be poisoned. And silence. Uh, the rejuvenation potions are extremely useful in a boss battle too. They instantly give you 35% health and mana. Health potions do take time to heal you. And sometimes if the damage is faster than you can heal it, it's a one-way trip. A rejuvenation potion will stop that death and give you some time. A 
Although once this act is complete, I will be taking a break. Because this whole thing has been filmed in one sitting. And it is the very first time I've ever done a Let's Play, so... Time will tell. And there's an example of when you need Skelly Mages. They've barred themselves in a room and I have to find the door. To open the door so my Skellies can murder them. Because unfortunately the Bone Boys don't have the skill to open their own doors when you need them to. <laughs> There's another few dungeons in this game that your skeletons will frustrate you when they decide to teleport over the place and aggro everybody and <laughs> when you, before you're ready for them to. You may raise them, but they are Murder-seeking missiles. I remember playing with an army of like 20... I think it was 20 skeletons, 20 skeleton mages, and you could not see anything in the legacy graphics. It was bedlam. Boys are bringing fire and terror to the demon kind. Should be noted too the ghosts can attack you and your minions through walls. So and they can stack up on top of each other. So they can be like 20 of them on top of one, one unit model. And you think you're getting attacked by one ghost, but it's more like 30. There's also swarms of flies in the next act that do the similar thing. You think you're finding one swarm and it's actually 30. <laughs> Ghosts drain mana, so spellcasters that get into melee with them might might get in a bit of trouble. Although to be fair, once if you play as a sorcerer, once you unlock teleport, that you it's broken character. Exploration is a thing of the past. It's only limited by your magic supply. <laughs> As far as I can tell, all of the speedrunners and uh, use the sorceress. But I could be wrong on that. Like I said, Diablo 2 has not been on my radar for many years. But I am enjoying this reimagining. This resurrection of a renowned classic. This game inspired me and a lot of my friends to start playing Dungeons and Dragons and on a tabletop game. Many, many fun times were had around the D&D table. And I would say that Diablo 2, or the first Diablo, was a big part in me finding that part of my life it certainly gave me the confidence to push forward and think creatively in a world where I was groomed to think logically and analytically and down into the depths of the jail level 2 
the old heartbeat music is hypnotizing me. <laughs> it's running at my own heart rate, I think. The old 42 beats a minute. There we go. <laughs> Not concentrating and I nearly got smashed for half of my life. i get my bearings back. Wait for this curse to wear off. Complacency will get you killed in hardcore. And I cannot describe, cannot describe the rage <laughs> that you feel when you die to such a trickle, uh, trivial, such a trivial thing. Although I should stop talking about Greetings. losing characters and concentrate. Although I do think that I will leave this episode here and next episode will be the finale where we fight Andariel and we show her who is the Lord of Death in this region. Until next time, Commander Tyrael, out.